Hi, everyone. Welcome to Grace Church Safe Church Orientation. Uh, we'll be going over the Grace Church policy today. Um, this is for all of the youth of our church, uh, any type of youth activities um, that you want to be involved in. Um, we need to have you do this Safe Church Orientation. So uh, here we go. Uh, thank you for attending, and uh, we look forward to um, going over this material with you because at the very heart of the issue is the safety of our children. And so um, to start, you will need the last three sheets printed up of the Safe Church Orientation Worksheet. The policy is found on our website, that is www.gracecrc.org. And if you go to that page, you will find on the top right hand side of the top bar, a label, Grace CRC Ministries. If you click on that, it will bring you to the page that shows our ministries. I blink the top uh, part of the page shows uh, the youth uh, program. And if you go just a little bit further down, you will notice a line in yellow print that says, Grace CRC Safe Church Policy. Click on that and you will be able to download it. If you download it, then we'll want to at least print the last three pages, Appendix F and G. And you'll need to do that before we continue with the seminar. Um, so, um, and you may want to print the whole document or you may at least want to have that document handy with you when you watch this video. Um, but at least make sure that you print those uh, documents because you will need to turn those in to receive credit and be listed uh, approved for working with Grace CRC Youth. So hit pause, get those printed, and come on back um, with them ready to go. All right, welcome back. I'm assuming that you've printed, um, and so you should have Appendix F and G. And to start with, I would take, like you to take a look at Appendix G, which is the Safe Church Worksheet. I want you to make sure that you put your name and date on the top. Um, and you'll notice that it is a true-false choice. You can keep this handy as we're going through the video. Uh, you can fill it out um, as we go along. You can fill it out at the end. You can review in the Safe Church Policy document um, anything there. Um, this is not a um, closed book test. You can open the book just to make sure that you understand um, what our policy is. And at the very bottom of that sheet, there's a wide open space. As I go along in the presentation, I will be occasionally stopping and saying, please mark the bottom of your sheet with the letter or the number or the symbol, uh, just to make sure that um, you have completed watching not just the first part and the last part, but the middle part as well. Um, and I know that sounds kind of rinky, but uh, we do want to ensure uh, the safety of our children. And so we really do want you to stick with it and make sure that we go through this policy. So if you have Appendix G handy and ready to go, here we go with the Safe Church policy. We start, first of all, with an overview. We are firmly committed to making the church and church-related activities safe from sexual, physical, and emotional abuse. We recognize in our society that the potential, uh, potential for abuse is a reality and we as a church have a responsibility to ensure that everyone involved in our fellowship is protected from abuse, especially children. We have a zero tolerance policy for child abuse and will terminate any employee who violates this policy and remove any volunteer who violates this policy. So in order to create the safest possible environment for everyone involved, we have developed these policies and procedures with the goal of preventing any instances of abuse. And so this includes guidelines for behavior of adults responsible for caring for children, 
careful screening to guard against involvement in our programs of volunteers or leaders with any record of prior abuses, obtaining written consent, written assent from church activity leaders that they agree to our safe church policy, making sure that more than one individual in any leadership role is present to help assure that no abuse takes place, promptly reporting to, public, to appropriate public authorities any instances of inappropriate behavior or alleged abuse. The goal is to prevent any abuse in any of the programs and activities at Grace Christian Reformed Church. At its heart is what Jesus said as they were bringing little babies to him, that he might touch them and bless them. The disciple says, no, don't, don't, don't bother him. And he said, let the children come to me and do not hinder them for to such belong the kingdom of God. Truly I say to you, said Jesus, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God like a child shall not enter it. And he took them in his arms and blessed them, laying his hands upon them. We are reminded of these words of Jesus each time a child is baptized at grace. When we are asked the question, do you, the people of the Lord, promise to receive these children in love Pray for them, help instruct them in the faith, and encourage and sustain them in the fellowship of believers. And our response is, we do. God helping us. So, in order to reduce the risk of child abuse, for those of you who are following along, I'm on page five. In order to create the safest possible environment, these measures are used to help prevent that abuse. First of all, um, council is required to approve all youth workers. Secondly, we are all involved, all those involved in youth work must make acknowledgement of the safe church agreement. Third, we have an orientation, that's this, and a worksheet pertaining to safe church policy. Fourth, we carry um, a church liability insurance, which has certain requirements for us as a church as well. And fifth, we have established an oversight body. So let's go into those a little bit more further. The scope applies to all ministries of Grace ERC that involve youth under the age of 18 years. This includes all participants, leaders, and helpers. Examples of such groups, but not inclusive, are nursery, Sunday school, when we've had vacation Bible school, the programs gems and cadets all fell under that, youth programs, everything that Grace Church is associated with is covered under these policies. So first of all, we've established that leaders, helpers, and volunteers of all ministries in the scope of this policy must be approved by council prior to the start of their involvement in the ministry and the chair of the particular committee that oversees that ministry has the responsibility of submitting those requests to council. Um, so if you are contemplating um, working with uh, youth um, catechism or Sunday school, um, and you would like to do that, then you would see the chair of the education committee and the chair of the education committee would make sure that your name appeared to council and council will, would um, do a due diligence and then um, you would be approved in order to be able to do that. So that's one step. Second step is that all individuals who have the responsibility in caring for children in the ministry under the scope of this policy must read and understand the safe church policy and sign the safe church agreement form. That's what you have downloaded, right? Okay, and we are going through it now. You must have read that and you must agree to it. And there's an agreement that we'll go through. That's one of the appendices that I asked you to print and we'll be covering that um, at the end. A copy of this is available online. If you want a printed copy for you, all you need to do is request that. Um, we can email that to you as well. We can print one up and drop it in snail mail. Um, but we will make those copies available. 
This is done annually, every year. So it isn't a matter of, well, I did this three years ago, so I'm safe, or I did this two years ago. No, we do this every year. Normally, we do it in conjunction with the startup of our programs in the fall. However, since we've had COVID and we have been limited and we are now restarting the ministries of nursery, we are doing it now and this will then carry through. Of course, you can watch the recording in, in August or September as well when we are starting up our, our, our fall season. Um, but this is what is available for 2021. If someone new comes in at the middle of the year, of course, we will have this recording. Um, they will be required as well to go through um, this particular policy. In the instances of volunteers who are under the age of 18, the responsible parent or guardian is required to co-sign the statement with the underage volunteer. Um, so if you're under 18, make sure that your parents sign it as well or your guardian, um, and make sure that that gets turned in. Uh, we keep those copies on file here uh, as a part of our church records. If you refuse to sign, you will not be permitted to work with children. Simple. Okay, so the third thing that we have as, as far as putting in place to reduce the risk is this orientation and worksheet. So all paid and volunteer child or youth workers are required to participate in this. Normally we hold it in this room in the sanctuary after a worship service um, with COVID and now that we have um, uh, this uh, electronic uh, ability, um, we're recording it so that at your convenience you can watch it, you can listen to it and attend it and mark the sheet as required um, so that um, we know that you have taken it. And so now is a good time to take out your um, Appendix G Safe Church Worksheet and at the very bottom, write the number six. Number six. Okay? Just to make sure that you are attending this session. We know that you've heard so far. Um, so... Um, at the conclusion, we will go through and take a look at the worksheet, but you can be filling it out as we go along. Fourth, we have a liability policy that applies to all the various different activities of the church, um, both here and away from church premises, and we maintain that on an annual basis. They do checkups with us occasionally in terms of what we're doing and how we're doing it. Our policy is on file with them. And, and fifth, we have a safe church committee. And that committee is designed for administering and interpreting this policy. And we do a review from time to time about any changes uh, to check with the law, to see if the laws have changed, to make sure that the integrity of the policy and the procedures are up to date. And this committee consists of normally three people, the pastor, the chair of the education committee and the chair of the worship committee. Those are normally elders. Uh, matter of fact, as far as I can tell, in the last 17 years, always have been. Um, and we continue to serve that policy. So uh, a pastor, two elders, chair of the education committee, chair of the worship committee, those three people. The Safe Church Committee, um, also determines the level of background check that is required for individual volunteers or for youth workers. And we have a, a review that we do uh, on that as well. So we're turning over to page seven and looking at the roles, responsibilities, and rules, the three R's. First of all, safe church agreement, worksheet and orientation, everyone involved as a great CRC staff member, leader, helper, or volunteer that meets the scope requirements for this policy is required to read the policy, attend Safe Church Orientation, complete the Safe Church Worksheet, and sign the Safe Church Agreement. I know I'm repeating myself, but it is important that you understand this. This is a part of the work, okay? The distribution. The committee chair of the committees that oversee children and youth ministries must make sure that everyone involved in their respective ministries receives a copy of the current policy, attends the orientation, completes the worksheet, 
signs the Safe Church Agreement and turns those in to our church secretary, the administrator. The chairs of the committee may delegate this to members of their committee, but they're the ones responsible. So I come looking for you, chair people, if we have people who are trying to uh, do the work but haven't completed the policy. So you're the ones in charge of that. The committees include, but not limited to, the following education committee for Sunday school, JAMS Cadets work, uh, Youth Group Worship Committee for Nursery and Children's Worship Outreach Committee for Vacation Bible School. Those are programs that we have done in the past. Hopefully it would be nice to bring some of them back. Some of them are current. The administration of the safe church policy is assigned to the church secretary. The administrator is responsible for retaining all the signed copies of the safe church agreement and maintaining a master list of those who've been approved to serve, who've completed appendix F and G and the respective dates. Prior to updating the list, all staff and volunteers must be verified against the National Sex Offense Offender Registry and details are outlined in the administrative procedure. Fourth, responding to and reporting allegations of, ab of abuse. In event that abuse is suspected or alleged, the Safe Church Committee will function in the role officially representing Grace CRC to the external authorities, the families, the alleged abuser, the congregation, and the media. And there's more in terms of that when we go into uh, responding and reporting details. Policy oversight. Council shall establish a Safe Church Committee and approve its membership annually. The Safe Church Committee is responsible for the administration and interpretation of the policy. And now policy review, the Safe Church Committee reports to Council should do a detailed review of the policy a minimum of every three years, which involves contacting the insurance carrier on a, on a periodic basis, work with the knowledgeable insurance agent who understands the needs of the church, contact the denomination and consult with them about any significant changes, interact with the classes safe church team, review any changes to the law in order to ensure the integrity of policy and procedures and update the policy accordingly and present them to the council for approval. Rules and guidelines, okay. One of the rules that we have is that volunteers who are working with children or youth at Grace must be an active participant or a member of the church for at least six consecutive months before they can begin to participate. So if you have just started attending um, uh, five, six weeks ago, um, it will be a total of six months um, before you are um, allowed to be able to work with children. Just gives us a chance to get to know you better over a period of time. It's not perfect. We, there are other th checks that we run in as well, um, but this is one of the rules that we have in place. Two leader rule. All children and youth activities will have at least two approved leaders. These two leaders will be adult age 18 or older and at least five years older than the children and youth in their ministry. Volunteers under 18 years of age must be paired with an adult. This applies to on-site, off-site, and overnight activities. If two leaders are not available for each group, every effort should be made to achieve a satisfactory alternate arrangement. Otherwise, the activity will be canceled for that occasion. A one-on-one -on -one meeting is allowable if, one, the meeting is in a public area, and two, the parents and guardians are informed in advance and have given their consent. So if a youth leader is going to meet with a high school student, for example, um, then the meeting needs to take place in a public place, and two, the parents need to be aware of the meeting before it happens in order for that meeting to go on. Three, we have an open classroom rule. Meeting spaces, classrooms, and nursery may be visited without prior notice by parents, by staff, or other volunteer church workers, okay? And at this point, I want you to take out your Safe Chief Church worksheet and write the letter D as in Delta. Overnight and offsite activities. When traveling offsite in separate vehicles, the two liter rule must may be followed if vehicles travel in cavern, caravan. Vehicles must be kept in sight of each other and make stops at the same times and places. The youth group permission form, which is in appendix B of your um, policy, 
should be completed for all Grace CRC sponsored events that meet either of the following criteria. It's either an overnight stay or exceeds 30 miles from Grace Church. So in both cases, the, the um, youth group permission form needs to be signed. On to page nine. How do you do discipline? <clears throat> Normally, we'd like to think that all of our children are perfect and never need discipline. However, that is not the case. <coughs> we all struggle. So how do we do discipline with uh, proper guidelines? We need to attend to the physical and emotional well-being of children in our care. So this is what our guidelines are. One, corporal punishment is not permitted. No slapping, hitting, pinching, pushing, any action that leaves a mark, bruise, or wound, or the use of a device or object to administer discipline. Two, abusive verbal discipline is not permitted. In other words, hurling an insult, persistent yelling, or threatening. Three, instead we want to make sure to use positive reinforcement to encourage good behavior from the children. Children are to be reminded of the kind of behavior that's acceptable for their setting. Older children may benefit from having these expectations in written form, such as children must refrain from hitting, kicking, or injuring anyone in the classroom. Children are used to an inside voice. They must take turns by raising their hands. Children must be obedient and follow the teacher's instruction. Children need to be aware of what the classroom rules are. Expectations of children's behavior must reflect their age level of comprehension. Similarly, discipline must reflect the age and level of comprehension of the children involved. So example, uh, three-year-old children should not have to sit in a timeout for longer than three minutes. Leaders and teachers, to avoid having to discipline a child, should try when possible to distract the child. When nothing seems to be working, staff and volunteers should go get help before you lose your composure. And you should know if you're going to be working with youth when you're about to lose your composure, okay? You want to stop before then and get help. When misbehavior in a class or activity becomes an ongoing problem, additional parents or aides should be brought in to help supervise the class or activity. Don't be afraid to ask for help. Concerns about a child's behavior or questions about an appropriate response to a child's behavior should be reported to the program supervisor or committee chair that has oversight of the ministry. Okay, how do you work with then um, children showing affection? Working with small children sometimes requires some bodily contact. So guidelines need to be observed. Gentle, casual touching on a child's head, arm, hands, usually permissible. More demonstrative actions, if you can, should avoid. For example, kissing is inappropriate. Lap sitting is inappropriate for children over the age of two. Instead, encourage children to sit next to you. To console a child who's crying uncontrollably in the sight of other adults, you may hold a child in your lap until the crying stops. Avoid body-to-body -body hugs. One-arm hugs, side hugs, or hand or hand to arm hugs are permissible. Now, if a child comes running up to you and wraps both of his arms around you, I don't expect you to push the child away and say, no, 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 bad child, okay? But I do expect that when you initiate this activity that you will use the appropriate guidelines. Restroom assistance. Children and youth are encouraged to take care of their personal needs to the best of their ability. When bathroom assistance is needed, children's privacy must be respected along with openness to other adults. Guidelines thus are these. For the protection of all, children should generally go to the bathroom in the group whenever possible. A female worker should accompany a female child, a male worker a male child, if possible. In a mixed group, a female worker should accompany the children. If a child does not need assistance, the adult should stand by the doorway while the child uses the bathroom. The child requires assistance, the adult should prop open the bathroom door and leave the stall door open as he or she assists the child. In the nursery, diapers or clothes will be changed within sight of another worker. If a parent has requested to be contacted and wishes to assist their own child, nursery workers will not be allowed to change diapers or assist with toilet needs. You need to go and get the parent and have them do that. 
what happens when there's an accident, an accidental injury to a child. In the event that this happens during a church activity, the following steps should be followed. For minor injuries, scrapes and bruises, workers will provide basic first aid as appropriate, and the leader must notify the child's parent or guardian of the injury at the time the child is picked up. For injuries requiring medical attention, beyond simple first aid, the parent and or guardian will be immediately summoned. If warranted by circumstance, an ambulance will be called. In the event an injury occurs while on an outing, the volunteer will use the information provided by the parent guardian on the permission form. Where can you find first aid supplies? In the secretary's office of the church, the cabinet is marked. If you're over at the fellowship house, it's in the kitchen. The cabinet is marked. Other use of the church facilities. The established facility use procedure should be followed when any church facilities are used by groups and individuals other than Grace CRC sponsored events. Depending on the nature of and frequency of the use, the following should be considered. This is per our insurance carrier recommendation. Uh, we need to have a hold harmless agreement signed and we need a certificate of insurance. For activities specifically involving children and youth, we request a copy of, of a, the abuse prevention policy from the external party. For activities specifically targeted for children and youth, it is expected that the third party have an abuse prevention policy in place and we can make our policy available to them if they wish. What about social media? Any electronic communication in social media requires the express, express permission of the parents as well as a copy of the co to the co-leader of the group. And there is a permission form included, uh, see Appendix B2, um, by all parents of youth. Okay, how do we handle responding and reporting of abuse? Here are the steps. Something happens. How do you respond to the child? When an instance of possible abuse comes to the attention of a responsible adult leader, one of the leader's first responsibilities is be a good listener. Listening to a child's story is important to gather information about what may have occurred. Some of this information may be useful in assessing whether there's reason to suspect abuse may have already occurred. Careful listening must can also be helpful to the child who may be looking for an adult response. Some guidelines then are, take the child seriously when they tell their story. Avoid judgmental statements such as, I think you just had a bad dream, or you're just making it up. Do not appear frightened or disgusted by the child's story. This may cause the child to stop talking or believe that you're upset with the child. Do not try to convince the child that the story isn't true or that it didn't happen that way, that the way the child reported it. Don't make promises to the child that you will not tell anyone about what has been shared with you. You're going to need to share it. Remind the child that whatever happened was, their, was not their fault. Assure the child that it was a good decision to share what had happened to them with someone else. Do not offer a reward for the child to tell their story or to promise a gift if the child would tell another adult. Reassure the child that they do not deserve to be hurt by anyone. Don't frighten the child by talking about police involvement or a medical exam. Share that other people need to know about what happened and they will talk to the child later. Do not ask the child to show any bruises that are beneath underwear or clothing. Only observe those bruises that are accessible. Do not tell the child that he or she has been abused. Offer to support the child and remind the child that you care about them. Listening to the child should not take the form of a full-fledged investigation. That's not your job, okay? The listener should refrain from expressing any judgments after taking appropriate time to listen, however, careful notes should be made about the conversation with the child to facilitate ac accurate recall of what was said. And let me tell you how easy it is to think that I will remember all of that 
And actually, it doesn't take long at all, and the brain starts to forget some of those details. So do go immediately, get a pen, pencil, paper, or uh, on your phone or tablet, write in what you remember. And now at the bottom of Appendix G on your Safe Church worksheet, would you write the number three? What happens when you expect, suspect child abuse? Should there be an allegation of child abuse, the following steps will be followed. Number one, treat it seriously. Two, pray for all of the individuals involved. Three, immediately begin documenting all procedures which occur in handling the allegation. Four, reach out someone to ch in church leadership and work together to determine whether external reporting should be made. And if it's determined that a report should be made, contact the authorities external to the church within 24 hours. You may make a report anonymously. The Safe Church Committee is also tasked with contacting county officials in order to establish their responsibility in handling the situation. You are not representing the church when you make your report to the county, okay? But you are responsible for doing so. State statute requires that any person volunteer or staff in the position of care provider for children is considered, quote unquote, a mandated reporter. A mandated reporter must report child abuse or neglect if it is suspected. Failure by a mandated reporter to report abuse or neglect within 24 hours of their first suspicion of a child abuse or neglect shall be fined not more than $500 for the first failure and for any subs subsequent failures, not less than $1,000. If the local Department of Social Services becomes aware of an incident involved, involving a mandated reporter who failed to report pursuant to the Code of Virginia, they must report the incident to the local Commonwealth's attorney. Okay, so what does church leadership do once church leadership has received a report? When an incident of abuse is suspected or alleged, the Grace CRC staff and volunteers are required to report the circumstances to the Safe Church Committee within 24 hours. And if you remember, Safe Church Committee is composed of the pastor, uh, two elders, one the head of the Education Committee and one ahead of the Worship Committee, okay? Any one of those three, okay? You need to report that within 24 hours to them. It's not the responsibility of the reporting person to substantiate the alleged or suspected abuse. If you suspect, if it's alleged, you report. The initial responsibility of the Safe Church Committee is instead to determine whether there is reason to suspect that the child abuse may have occurred. To make that determination, whether or not there's reason to suspect, the Safe Church Committee shall convene as soon as possible to consider, based on available information, whether a reason to suspect exists. In making this determination, the committee should avail itself of such counsel as deemed necessary, including, but not limited to, consulting with an attorney, consulting with the representative of the church insurance company, contacting the denomination, contacting the classes Safe Church Committee. If Safe Church Committee concludes there is reason to suspect child abuse, the incident must be reported to the Virginia Child Protective Service Agency as provided by Virginia Child Protection Law. Safe Church Committee shall maintain a complete and accurate record of the reported incident and it shall keep such records confidential. Church will provide appropriate system to the victim, the offender, and others involved. The pastor should extend whatever care and resources are necessary to those impacted by the allegation. In providing care to the principals, the alleged victim and the accused, and their families, the pastor or church leader should under no circumstances be drawn into a discussion of the truth or falsity of an allegation. No step shall be taken to assign blame or to confute or refute, to confirm or refute an allegation. Confidentiality shall be observed for both the alleged victim and the accused until advised to the contrary by the Safe Church Committee. The Safe Church Committee will determine the appropriate time to contact parents or guardian of the alleged victim and guidelines for contacting parents are what we're going to cover right now. 
So an incident of suspected abuse should be reported to the parents or guardians with a great deal of sensitivity. Parents may show disappointment, shock, disbelief, anger. It's important to be calm and non-judgmental and to offer parents spiritual, emotional, and prayer support at a time like this. Some guidelines for contact with parents are as follows. The Safe Church Committee will determine the appropriate time to contact parents. Anyone who makes a report to Child Protective Services is usually granted anonymity. Do not identify the reporter unless you're given permission to do so. Don't share any statements made by the child with a parent or a relative who is implicated by the child as an abuser. Don't share the child's statement with anyone other than the authorities until the identity of the abuser can be determined and authorities have determined whether or not the child can be protected from the contact with that person. Don't attempt to convince a parent that the alleged abuse did not happen. Don't attempt to discredit the child or cast suspicion on the alleged abuser. Do not investigate with a parent who who may be, what may be happening in the home. Don't share information with a parent which has not been shared with the authorities. Don't make promises to a parent about the outcome of the investigation. Listen to any information a parent may offer about the incident and record it immediately after the conversation. Don't minimize or embellish the type of abuse, its impact to the child or its harm to the child. Again, listening to the child should not take the form of a full-fledged investigation and the listener should refrain from expressing any judgments. After taking appropriate time to listen, however, careful notes should be made about the conversation with the child to facilitate accurate recall of what was said. Okay, so reporting to parties external to the church. And here is where having this printout, this copy printed is, is helpful because there are some good phone numbers here. Uh, the National, uh, the Child Protective Services hotline is 703-324-7400. Safe Church Committee, um, you can reach us. Our, our names are in the directory um, and you can reach us at any time. Um, you notify the denomination. Um, there is a safe church um, group uh, that works in the denomination in Grand Rapids. Uh, there is also a safe church team on our classes. Um, Meg Janista Kuykendall is head of that currently and you can contact her. Notify as well the church's insurance company. We have the phone number for Guide One. That is our current insurance company. We have a reporting abuse form in Appendix E to get all the information that you need before you would call the child abuse hotline. Again, you can make those reports anonymously. If you choose to uh, give your name to the authorities there, they will not release it to the victim's family except by court order. Persons reporting in good faith are immune from civil and criminal liability according to the Commonwealth of Virginia. After a report is made, a CPS worker will interview the child and siblings, the parents or caretakers, and the alleged abuser. And the CPS social worker may also contact other persons having information regarding the suspected abuse or neglect. When an allegation of abuse is made, the alleged offender must be informed of the allegations and must be relieved of all their duties. That's called censure of service. Pending an inv investigation by the property authorities, which is CPS and or the local law enforcement agencies. If an allegation of, abu of abuse is made against a pastor, church leader, or volunteer sanctioned by the church leadership to act for Grace CRC, the alleged abuse incident will be reported to Class Hackensack Abuse Advisory Board for advice and assistance. If the allegation of abuse is made against a pastor or a paid staff person, we go through the following additional procedures. One, church visitors, which are members of um, the uh, Christian Reformed Church uh, that are, are close to us but not members of our congregation. And pastor church relations director is notified immediately. Two, council and church visitors shall provide pastoral assistance to the alleged victim. Three, pastor's salary um, 
or staff salary and housing stipend shall continue during the period of suspension and investigation. Four, the consistory, with the possible assistance of the church visitors, professional counselors, and legal authorities shall ensure that a full and accurate account of the allegation is obtained. Five, church visitors shall report in executive session to the next meeting of classes. Six, the confidentiality of all parties is protected. Seven, if the allegations are true, the procedures for deposition of office, of office under Article 83 of the church order shall be followed. If the suspension is lifted, this shall be made known to the church visitors, the director of pastor church relations, and to the executive session of classes. If the allegations are found to be false, censure on service is lifted. The allegations are found to be true. The offender must continue under censure, under censure on service and be dealt with by the safe church committee in accordance with church order supplement article 78 through 84, which is the discipline of church officers. To be reinstated into the church, because what this happens if this is taken to its, um, to its extent is that that person is excommunicated, to be reinstated in the church, an ex-offender must admit sorrow for the sin and request reinstatement in accordance with the provisions of the church order. The offender must submit a statement of visitation and progress from a psychologist or therapist to the safe church committee. An ex-offender will never be placed in a position that places him or her or any child at risk. At this point, please write the number seven at the bottom of your safe church worksheet. Responding to the media. Okay, so um, media can jump on something like this. Who reports? Who says what's going on? If it becomes a matter of public record at such time as the disclosure of an arrest, the media has the right to report such incidences. The media, this media policy will assist Gray CRC leaders to thoughtfully prepare for how to respond to the media's awareness while protecting the victims of such attacks and facilitating the legal process. So the Safe Church Committee will designate a single spokesperson for the church. Only this person will share such events with the media when it is deemed necessary. The designated person ought to be knowledgeable about the abuse issues, not related to, to either victim or perpetrator, but someone who is actively involved in congregational care or life of the church. Statements to reporters or to the media may not be made by the church's staff or volunteers. <sighs> Regarding any of the ongoing investigation of child abuse or neglect, okay? Just this one individual person speaks for the church. The identity, the identity of the victim is held confidential. Only an adult victim can give consent to release his or her name for publication. The facts ought to be presented only if they are known. Refrain from speculation and conjecture. A prepared statement obviously will assist the person reporting the events on, the, on behalf of the council to the media. The Safe Church Committee and Council in consultation with legal advisors and experts should review any such statement. That brings us finishing page 14 and we have then our appendix A which is a glossary explaining the terms, the three terms that we use, child, youth, staff, and volunteer. You will notice then Appendix B1 with the youth group permission form and Appendix B2, which is a social media permission form. Appendix C is very interesting and I wish you'd take a look at that with me um, because this uh, gives Virginia's child abuse law and so it goes in and very clearly delineates what the boundaries are, um, what is involved, definitions, um, and it is incredibly clear. So do take a look at that. Um, Appendix D gives definitions, types, and symptoms. So we talk about the definition of abuse. It refers to any act committed by a parent, giver, caregiver, or a person in a position of trust, which is not accidental and which harms or threatens to harm a child's physical 
or mental health or welfare. Okay? What are the types? There's physical abuse, physical neglect, sexual abuse, emotional abuse, medical neglect, failure to thrive, mental abuse, neglect, educational neglect, bizarre discipline. Look at those in this document. Because if you're wondering, I wonder what the difference is between emotional abuse and mental abuse. And you need to take a look at some of that so that you can understand better the entire parameters of what this abuse involves, okay? And now I need you to mark the bottom of your worksheet with the letter C. C as in Charlie. What are the signs and symptoms of child abuse? Children rarely exhibit just one sign that they are victims of abuse. Some symptoms may represent typical developmental changes or the after effect of traumas uh, in their lives other than abuse. Conversely, it, uh, it's possible for abuse to be taking place without the appearance of noticeable symptoms because the, the ab child's ability to mask or to deny what would be otherwise a very confusing and painful time of acknowledgement. So several signs over a period of time observed suggest that a child may be suffering from abuse. So you look at regression, thumb sucking, baby talk, bedwetting, changes in social behavior, excessive crying, clinging, becoming aggressive or withdrawn, physical manifestations, stomach aches, breathing difficulties, sore throats accompanied by gagging, stains on child's undergarments, exhibiting signs of fear around family member or familiar person or fear of a familiar place or object, signs of uh, fear of being touched, shying away from physical contact, resistance, uh, to being diapered or going to the bathroom, use of explicit language or sexual behavior that is beyond the child's comprehension or life experience, unexplained injuries or bruises, name calling, fascination with fires. All of these are important for you to be familiar with. School-aged children, on the other hand, have other signs that show up, some of the same physical man manifestation, patterns of injury, unusual fears, again, poor concentration, exhibiting adult-pleasing behavior, striving per for perfection, acting miserable of failure, acting in rage, out of control, shyness about physical touch, uh, ex exhibiting signs of, of needing to be in control, bullying others, hostility or distrust of adults, acting out, hoarding food, lying, stealing, assaulting, low self-esteem. You know, all of these are signs that you could say, you know, any child can experience at one time. But if you're starting to see these signs again and again and again uh, appearing over time, you should be able to have this question mark in your head. Adolescence. A lot of the same things show up, some things that are a little bit more, um, that, that show up uh, again. You want to be watching for truancy from, uh, from school, cruelty to animals, uh, perfectionist in behavior, uh, performance plummets, um, sexual pro provocative behavior, um, having a few friends, changing friends often. Um, so these are all things that you need to be aware of. Take a look at this list, make sure that you go through and follow through with this. Okay. So you will then turn to Appendix E and that has a reporting abuse form. You should be familiar with that. Hang on to that. It is available to you. If you ever need a copy printed up, you can always stop by the office and receive a copy as well. You now need to turn to the Safe Church Agreement and fill this out with me. Okay, Appendix F, you have already printed this up. So we're going to fill this out. You'll notice, have you ever been convicted of an offense other than a minor traffic offense? And you need to check that. You need to elaborate if you checked yes. Have you ever been convicted of a crime against a child? And you need to check that and you need to elaborate on that if you checked yes. Uh, you need to put the date at which you are viewing this and completing this. So put that date down on the next blank. You are authorizing us to be able to um, access information regarding your history. Um, you need to sign that, you need to date that, and you need to print your name. 
If you are under 18 years of age, you need to fill out the bottom part um, and you need to give that to your parent to sign. They need to print their name and they need to put the date on that. Okay, then comes Appendix G, the true and false worksheet. You need to work your way through that and you need to turn that in and you should have listed at the bottom of your sheet um, several letters and numbers. And with that, I will conclude with a word of prayer. Gracious God in heaven, take these words that we have exchanged, that we have developed, and use them, Lord, for the safety of the children. Help us, Lord, keep in mind that you, your angels are watching them and that you hold them close to your heart. So, O oh God, may we as well treat them and treat them with care and provide for them a safe experience in being in your presence in this church. Bless us now as we complete this study. Thank you for allowing us to work with the children you have given to us. Hear our prayer for Jesus' sake. Amen. That's all, folks. <laughs>